Well, the problems that electoral management bodies face across the world are very common problems that are to do with enrolment, to do with younger people becoming involved in politics, that are to do with civic education, political knowledge. These are problems to do with electoral management that everybody faces across the world, in Europe, North America, East Asia, whatever the region happens to be. So in Australia, we established CABER uh, about four or five years ago to try and address a lot of these problems, to gather evidence on these issues, and to try and use that to better manage the whole electoral process. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is produced a series of reports on a variety of issues which have really improved electoral management in Australia and we're trying to um, export a lot of these ideas, we're trying to bring these to the attention of other electoral management bodies around the world. Well CABER is an advisory body, mm -hmm. um, we are part of the electoral commission but we only advise the electoral mm -hmm. commission and what we try and do is gather evidence and we look at various policy alternatives about ways that could be brought to the attention of better informing public policy and the management of elections. So we bring various options, policy papers, evidence into the public domain. We bring that to the attention of the electoral commissioner and the people that run elections in Australia and then they make decisions about whether or not they will be implemented and how they can use those to better manage the whole electoral process. Well one of the things we've been interested in is the lack of enrolment mm -hmm. in Australia. Enrolment's been declining. Yes. Now we do have compulsory voting so voters turn out to vote. 95% of people that are enrolled actually turn out to vote mm -hmm. but enrolment has been going down and it's been going down particularly among younger people. Mm -hmm. So we produced a policy paper which looked at ways that we might reinvigorate the interest of younger people in politics and one of the recommendations we had was to make better use of social media and the internet to try and engage younger people in the political process. Mm -hmm. um, we put that as one of the options, the Electoral Commission, and that's one of the things they've adopted. So they, they now make uh, a lot of efforts to try and get younger people enrolled by contacting them through social media, by a whole variety of efforts in terms of uh, sending the material and so on, trying to encourage their interest. And I think that's a practical measure. Um, whereby CABER has actually brought um, evidence to uh, better inform policy. Another example is um, the design of ballot papers. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, the electoral process in Australia is very complex. So we have different electoral systems between the states and the Commonwealth mm -hmm. and we have different electoral systems between uh, upper and lower houses mm -hmm. and then we have three-year parliaments. So voters in Australia effectively go to the polls every 18 months using different systems. Now that places a big informational burden on voters. They've got to grapple with different processes, different ballot papers. Uh, sometimes they have to number all the boxes, sometimes they don't. And all of these things are really quite difficult for voters, particularly in an immigrant society where about one in four of the population have been born overseas and haven't necessarily been socialised into the whole electoral process. So one of the things we've tried to do is uh, produce better voter education mm -hmm. and we've produced a variety of initiatives whereby uh, ways in which the Electoral Commission could provide more information to voters about the electoral process to try and reduce the proportion of spoiled ballots, ballots that have been incorrectly filled out. And that's been something that's been uh, quite a positive initiative as well. A variety of countries do this, um, for example the British Electoral Commission has a body, in Ireland there's a very small body which gathers evidence, in Canada the Electoral Commission has very close links to the universities in Canada where a lot of this research is carried out. The advantage of a group like CABER or your own Electoral Research Institute is that you're structuring the conversations that already take place. So you're structuring it, giving it form, uh, you're providing reports and having a, a, a frequent mechanism whereby people can gather evidence. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the conversations already take place between institutions, between government, universities and so on. But by having something like CABER or ERI, mm -hmm. you're actually structuring a lot of these. Mm -hmm. And in, in the end of the process, it should really provide a much better electoral system and a better managed electoral system because I mentioned earlier, a lot of the problems that electoral management bodies yeah. face are common problems across the world. Mm -hmm. So you may not have problems with enrolment at the moment, 
but you may well have in the future, and a lot of the other democracies do have problems with enrolment. So studying international best practice, sharing knowledge, I think this is really important for international best practice in managing elections. Well, we have regular meetings of CABER, mm -hmm. and we have people on the committee who are involved in universities. We mm -hmm. also have people who are involved in the state and territory electoral commissions. Uh, we have several journalists. Mm -hmm. So we have a wide range of people who are very knowledgeable about elections. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, uh, some finance to uh, put out that to get people to write reports, gather evidence, and so on, which is then put into the public domain, and that provides the basis for debate to see what the best measures actually are. In terms of evaluating how effective these measures are, sometimes that takes quite a long time. So for example, the initiatives to do with social media mm -hmm. and the enrolment of younger people, we really won't know how effective those are for maybe four or five years. Yeah. I mean, this is a very long-term process. Um, but that really is the best indicator of how effective these measures actually are. Mm -hmm. Do you get better enrolment? Do you get better turnout? Mm -hmm. Do you have lower numbers of spoiled ballots that are incorrectly filled out? Do you have more voters that are satisfied with mm -hmm. the whole political process that they find it easy to use and mm -hmm. so on? These are very clear indicators which we can use to evaluate the effectiveness of these measures. Well, I think you've had a very good start. You've committed quite a lot of resources to it. Um, you're doing all the right things in terms of setting up really a great website, engaging people across various institutions and universities, and you also have a, a degree course which is being uh, put forward. There's also examples around the world about how to do this. Obviously the Australian Electoral Commission have been a pioneer in developing this, but also other electoral management bodies around the world have done similar exercises. So there's a great body of evidence and examples all around the world about how to do it. Mm. What you've done, I think, is uh, come to a great start. There's obviously great interest and there's great commitment uh, among the various institutions to make this work. And of course everybody should be in favour of much greater evidence about how to make the electoral process better, fairer, more competitive and much easier for voters to use. Well, I think there already are very close links between the Australian Electoral Commission and AERI. The Australian Electoral Commission have been involved in this process for the last three or four years. The CABER example was something that attracted um, people in Indonesia about how evidence could be used to more effectively manage elections. So I'm sure there'll be ongoing uh, links between the various organisations in the future. But also I think with AERI you've got a very good uh, you've got a very good possibility to become a leader within the region, within East Asia. You've got a whole range of countries that are democratizing, that have got stable democracies, that are moving towards uh, uh, stable democracy in the future. AERI could be an example for a lot of those countries and you could be gathering evidence about international best practice that would feed through into those countries to make elections much better and much more manageable. No, there's no real, there's no political interference in CABER mm -hmm. or really in the Electoral Commission in Australia. It's an independent statutory mm -hmm. authority. The Electoral Commissioner is independently mm -hmm. appointed mm -hmm. by the government and both sides of politics really have to agree on whoever is appointed to that. In terms of CABER, we are an advisory body, so we don't determine policy. Mm -hmm. We only make recommendations to the Commissioner. But probably the most important point is if we gather evidence yeah. Evidence is objective, um, yeah. it's something people can look at and evaluate, mm -hmm. um, it's things you can see in terms of the effect of policies, you can evaluate it and so on. We look at examples from around the world about in policy initiatives and innovations, how effective those have been in terms of making elections more manageable. Mm -hmm. So all of this in terms of evidence um, is something that people find it difficult to argue with. Evidence speaks for itself in that sense. Well, I'm not an Indonesian expert. Um, I can't really adjudicate on that. Um, I'm impressed by the logistical problems you must have in terms of managing a democracy of so many people. I think one of the, perhaps the fourth largest democracy in the world, the number of islands. Managing elections in Indonesia would be a hundred times more difficult to managing elections in Australia. Now we have difficulties with managing elections in Australia because we've got a huge country, a mm -hmm. um, lot of it unpopulated, most people live in Sydney, Melbourne on the coast, very few people live in the outback. We have problems there 
you have even bigger problems. So I think a lot of the things that you will discover about elections best practice in Indonesia, we will probably be getting ideas from you about making our elections more effective in the future, simply because of the size of the country. I first started studying elections when I did a PhD in the 1970s, and I did that on Irish politics. And then I studied comparative elections really from the 1980s and so on, so about 30, 35 years. And I've been to most countries in the world studying elections. Um, I find the whole subject fascinating, mm -hmm. how elections are organised, the, the sorts of processes people use. But I suppose my main interest actually is how voters use mm -hmm. elections, how they find elections. Are they satisfied, dissatisfied, do they find it easy or difficult? And one of the things I do is run surveys in a wide range of countries to actually ask voters about the whole process. And sometimes voters tend to be left out of the election process. We tend to look at procedures, we tend to look at institutions, mm -hmm. we tend not to ask the ordinary voter, what did you think? And that's my interest in the whole project, to make the process better, safer, fairer for the ordinary voter. In Caber we have uh, a variety of people who are involved in the committee who all have jobs in other places. So there's several academics like mm -hmm. me, uh, there's several electoral people who work for the state and federal electoral commissions and there's several journalists and people who have got a very intense interest in elections. Mm -hmm. So none of us are full-time in CABR. We do have support from the AEC in terms of administrative support, but we're all part-time in the sense that we have jobs in other places.